It is Wednesday, October the 18th, 2023. On the program today, the province of Alberta might want to leave the Canada Pension Plan and set up its own provincial pension plan. We're going to look at the latest news there. Also, Canada's newest inflation numbers dropped last month. We'll update you on that. Plus, if you manage an Airbnb in British Columbia, you are not going to like the new legislation that they've just announced. The Bank of Nova Scotia is laying off some staff, and we're going to look at the latest earnings reports. Let's get started with today's news. The Alberta provincial government held a town hall meeting on Monday, and they wanted to hear arguments as to whether they should quit participation in the Canada Pension Plan and set up their own uh, provincial plan. About a month ago or so, the province launched an online survey, and they wanted to gauge how Alberta residents feel about the proposal. Alberta currently represents about 11.5% of Canada's population, but it is claiming that the province is entitled to $334 billion, or 53% of the pension fund. The stated purpose of this week's town hall was to hear from Albertans and to listen to their concerns so the government can theoretically make note and ultimately address the specific uh, concerns and specific questions. Some popular questions that needed to be answered are things Things like the portability of the plan, uh, things like who's going to manage, so the investment manager of the plan, uh, death and di disability issues. Uh, a caller also asked uh, how the program would integrate with the current uh, federal old age security system. For more information on the overall pension plan uh, here in Canada, I will provide a link for another video that covers all that off. Another obvious question, which can't be answered yet, of course, is how many people would plan on moving to Alberta to take advantage of an Alberta pension plan if it's deemed to be superior to the current uh, Canada pension plan. Um, if Alberta were to withdraw from the CPP, it would need to provide written notice of its intent. It would have to draft um, uh, legislation and, and establish a, uh, an Alberta pension plan that is equivalent to what we have now. Um, it would also need to start accepting contributions beginning the third year following the year in which it gives notice. And again, the benefits would have to be comparable to the existing Canada pension plan. Stats Canada reported on Tuesday that Canada's inflation rate actually decelerated uh, down to 3.8% in September, and that's down from 4% that was reported back in August. They noted that the drop in the cost of living was broad-based, which is nice. It affected goods and services, travel, durable goods, and some grocery items. Um, on a monthly basis, for the first time since November 2022, the cost of living actually declined in September. The drop was only 0.1%, but at least it was moving in the right direction. Now, as is always the case, the price of gasoline affected these numbers. So gas prices fell 1.3% during the month, still up 7.5% from a year ago. Um, if gasoline was stripped out of the inflation numbers, the rate would have come down to 3.7% and down uh, from 4.1% in August. If you have any travel plans in the near future, you're going to welcome the fact that airfares declined 21.1% in September uh, compared to this time last year. And yes, grocery prices did continue to go up, but they went up at a much slower rate than we've seen um, over the past number of months. On an annual basis, the cost of groceries went up 5.8%. And in what was excellent news for me, the price actually declined for bacon, grapes, and some types of cheese. Now, my guess here is that this most recent report will probably be a nice surprise for the Bank of Canada. It might just give them enough confidence to hold the rate steady at the current 5% when they meet um, next week. They're meeting again on October the 25th. Um, the current odds um, are 20% chance that they will increase the rate, and that's down from 40% uh, percent just a few days ago before these most recent inflation numbers were announced. British Columbia Premier David Eby and Housing Minister Ravi Kalan, they announced the Short-Term Accommodations Act on Monday. And in the announcement, um, Eby highlighted the fact that thousands of homes used to be available either to buy or to rent, but are now off the market for people who are looking for a reasonable place um, to live at a, you know, struggling to find accommodation. The province estimates that there are around 28,000 short-term rental units today that are operating in communities across the country. Uh, about half of those are not compliant with existing municipal bylaws. Uh, according to the new legislation, in May 2024, the province is going to make it mandatory that short-term rentals can only be made for people who are renting out a part of their principal residence. In other words, if you have a spare room or if you have a secondary suite within your home, you'll be able to rent it out, but only if you also live in the residence. Now, there are a couple of exceptions that have been carved out here. The new rule is going to apply to communities that have 10,000 or more residents, but resort destinations like Whistler, Tofino, La Soyuz, they will be exempt from that. And in addition, uh, cities with a vacancy rate of 3% or more can also apply for an exemption. Uh, as part of the new legislation, the penalty for illegal operators will increase from currently $1,000 per infraction per day up to $3,000. 
Additionally, regional districts which don't have um, the current authority to regulate or license businesses because they're, they're uh, regional uh, districts, they will actually be given, be allowed to license and regulate short-term rentals as well. Uh, finally, by next summer, short-term rental platforms such as Airbnb, they're going to be required to share data with the province, including information that is specific to the hosts. Now, in a battle of philosophical standpoint, I would say, a Premier EB, he said, if you're an investor and you're buying three, four, or five homes and using short-term rentals to make wealth, the message here is that it is no longer allowed. And then Airbnb replied to that in a statement. And basically, they said that the legislation, in their opinion, won't alleviate the housing prices, crisis rather. Um, it will instead make the, um, it'll just take money out of people's pockets and inflate the cost of accommodations for visitors uh, and, of course, decrease tourism revenue. Bank of Nova Scotia announced yesterday that it has plans to cut 3% of its global workforce. And they're now joining a, a parade of other Canadian banks that are trimming their staff as they're facing continuing headwinds in the sector. Um, in a statement, Scotiabank said that these cuts are being made largely because customers have changed the way that they access their banking products and services. I think we can all relate to that. Uh, it's also a continuation of the bank's digitization and automation uh, efforts. These cuts come on the heels of Royal Bank already announcing that they've uh, cut 1% of their staff already and expects another 1% to 2% cut in this quarter. And also the Bank of Montreal has announced that it has reduced its workforce by 2.5%. I have a few earnings uh, reports to share that came out since the last update here. Um, yesterday, Bank of America reported now its best third quarter results in more than a decade. Uh, they reported 90 cents per diluted share, up from 81 cents a year ago. Revenue from the quarter was $25.17 billion. That's up from $24.5 billion a year earlier. Uh, Goldman Sachs also reported yesterday, and they reported, uh, get this, a 33% decline in profit um, in Q3. And this is now eight quarters in a row that Goldman has reported a year-over-year -year, uh, profit decline. They reported diluted earnings per shares of $5.47 for the third quarter. That is down from $8.25 from uh, the third quarter a year ago. Net revenues were $11.82 billion, down 1% year over year, and net earnings of $2.06 billion. Lockheed Martin also reported yesterday, and they reported fiscal uh, third quarter earnings of $6.77 per diluted share. That again is down from the $6.87 a year ago. Net sales for the quarter were $16.88 billion. That's up from $16.58 billion a year ago. Now for fiscal 2023, the company says it continues to expect its diluted um, earnings per share to fall in the range of $27 to $27.20. And they're expecting net sales of $66.25 billion uh, to $66.75 billion. Johnson & Johnson reported adjusted earnings of $2.66 per diluted share. That's up from $2.23 a year ago. For 2023, the company said it now expects adjusted earnings per share of $10.07 to $10.13. That is up from the prior guidance of $10 to $10.10. Sales for the year are now projected to be in a range of $83.6 billion to $84 billion. That compares with its prior outlook of $83.2 billion to $84 billion. Earlier today, Morgan Stanley reported its third quarter earnings. It reported $1.38 per diluted share. That is down from $1.47 a year earlier. It is down, but it did beat estimates of $1.27 per share. Net revenue for the quarter was $13.27 billion, up from $12.99 billion a year earlier. U.S. Bank Corp. also reported. They reported $1.05 per diluted share down from $1.18 a year earlier. Revenue from the quarter was $7.03 billion, and that compares with $6.33 billion a year ago. Finally today with our earnings numbers, Procter & Gamble reported its fiscal Q1 um, earnings this morning. It uh, reported $1.83 per diluted share. That's up from $1.57 a year ago. Net sales for the quarter were $21.87 billion, up from $20.61 billion a year earlier. The company said that it expects a fiscal 2024 earnings per share of $6.25 a share to $6.43, somewhere in that range. Um, all in sales growth for the current fiscal year is now projected to be 2% to 4%, and that compares with a growth rate of 3% to 4% that they previously had announced. 
Uh, later today, we have uh, reports from Netflix and Tesla. Those are coming out after market hours today. Tomorrow, we have reports from American Express. We have a report from Schlumberger. As always, I will put a link for the Investing Academy in the description of this video. If you want to sign up for our weekly newsletter, every Saturday it comes out called The Pulse. I will put a link in the description here. Thanks for watching this video. We'll see you next week.